I hear another gallant speech from nationalistic burst of verbal diarrhea, I bow to you and smash that spine's teeth in. Only thing I'm worrying about is staying alive. I didn't even know that dialogue option was a thing. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Show 17 and today I am covering a 3v3 on the map, Lian Forest. Gotta be getting a lot of Lian Forest free plays lately, but this is specifically from a Patreon, so I, 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 because it's a patron, I have to cover it. If you want to become a supporter on the channel, you can check out that subscribe button, click it. Uh, I know a lot of people ask that in YouTube videos, but it does really help. Thank you. And of course, to go one step further, there's my Patreon down below. But a Patreon supporter submitted a replay because they uh, support me so much that I pick a, I randomly pick from one of the people who submit it and try to cover it. So uh, one of these people is that awesome supporter, and I'll cover them toward the end. I Well, no, I'll cover them now. Thank you to Malam for submitting this replay. We'll see how things fare. Uh, we have Sherman Tank, Malam, and Johnny versus Doplo fan, Admiral PNG, and Video Shards. Um, and again, each side is pretty high up in terms of playtime, so it should be an interesting match. Two Soviet and American versus two austere and a OKW. Now on Sundays on Twitch, I cover a lot of replays live, so if you want a chance for me to cover your replay live on Twitch and then maybe showcase on YouTube, submit down below to my Discord or my Gmail. Oh, Rashlon immediately gets uh, pushed back. We have Armor Company by Sherman Tank, which actually, funny enough, uh, the, pre the day uh, before I, I released this, is the day that I go over the USF Commanders and actually complimented Armor Company, surprisingly. So you can check that out as well. See, I'm just I'm just getting out all of the uh, the obligatory um, stuff that YouTubers have to say. It's like check out my other videos, subscribe. Like, but again, thank you all for your support and watching my content. Seriously, uh, the same cannot be said for this poor assault engineer who's running for his damn life. Run, little man! Run! Oh, I'm sorry. Is the Kubo about to murder you? Oh man, it's I. It's it's like I have an undying uh, bias toward Armor Company, and I want to see them burn. But the unit survived, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I will not see him perish. What I might see perish is this Kubo as riflemen come along the side. Uh, Doplo fan might need to worry about Sherman Tank here, but Sherman Tank does su successfully retake the territory and push the OKW player back. However, Pioneers took mid, though MG is having a rough time with the Grenadier in mid. Uh, looks like the MG over here is firing through. Weirdly enough, I that seems like it shouldn't be happening, but he's firing through the uh, fence and hitting the conscript. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm assuming bullets would travel through and, you know, shoot infantry. Don't get me wrong there, but what I'm saying is, like, it is a little bit fishy that how is he getting sight lines to hit it? Anyway, whatever. He does hit it. Uh, we also have assault grenadiers, so video shards went mechanized, so we have armor company. Oh, we have special operations. And Johnny went shock rifle with a possible IS-2. KVA flamethrower is more likely because it's very powerful, but maybe an IS-2. You never know. Pioneers trying to hang out mid. Conscript's just picking them off. I, I, I like this guy's, like, tenacity to hide in the corner so it's harder for them to hit, but they're still going to be worn down. MG heading the Conscripts. We have a Mortar as well. Uh, by the way, I have Strategic Zoom on so I can zoom way far out. You can see here from afar. Pioneers, I would cut your losses and run before you die, which I feel like now is close to being guaranteed. I am shocked. I am actually very shocked that he lived. Um... Anyway, MG uh, runs for the hills. Uh, we have an Axis counterattack. I mean, Kubel's Vet 3 and is detecting units, so he'll be able to identify where the uh, the American player is in this case. Uh, he tries to hit these units, which are better at close range than far, but they're still doing enough damage against Kubel. Uh, both squads will fire a, uh, from range, and again, they have to cross this area, which could put them in a negative cover zone, which would help. A tree is thrown by the Sturms. Okay. It's funny because I'm literally reading a... Oh, not reading. I'm listening to an audiobook of a of a, a book that my brother recommended called uh, Operation Nemesis, I think it's what it's called. 
Um, yeah, but it is, it is really freaking good. And uh, there's literally a part where there, a tree goes flying and, and the two characters just see it. It's like, nope. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no. It, I've been enjoying that in my spare time. Wolf squads come around uh, trying to circle the American. And they might be able to. Storms do get pushed back. But it, it was successful. And Doppler fan pushes back Sherman Tank pretty effectively uh, from the forest area. If he can lock this area down... That would be a nice win, as we can see on the left. Uh, looks like Johnny has the city under his control. Or at the very least, he has enough of a presence here. That's making it very difficult for the uh, austere player, in this case, video shards, to really push on in. Conscripts are pushing the enemy back. Has he taken any losses? His manpower doesn't look... He did lose a conscript. Okay. He did lose a conscript. Because he only has four uh, units. I'm like, that doesn't seem right. But, yeah, that's what he has. Um, let's see right now. We have, oh my god, I just realized, four ass grins. That's a, that's, that's a lot of ass grins. That's, that, that's a lot. Anyway, um, he's gonna push for mid. The MG's no longer there. There's a demo, be oh, he, tr Milan was trying to be sneaky with the demo, but the ass grins are like, no, just get out of here. Just, just shoo. Just, just shoo. Anyway. Uh, they're right now. Are they healing back at base? No, they, but they will be as soon as they get a medical station operational. Um, we have medical station. Speaking of which, on the OKW's front, so the OKW player can heal his men. Um, now he right now has to worry about incoming American counterattack, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Assault graders get in the building. Shock troops throw a grenade. Can he get out? He does not. He loses three models. Might lose the unit. Conscripts trying to pick him off. He is very low, but it looks like he will survive uh, to fight another day. All right. Uh, the city is now more under contention. We have pioneers that managed to get into enemy lines and take the munition point, which is double munitions for the Axis right now. Allies are equal in fuel, but down in munitions. We do have forces coming on in to intercept. Uh, conscripts, which have the upgrades. We have the shock troops on the field. Um, so he has a good amount of weapons. Malam is building a tier 3 base, so possibly a T-70, a half-track, something like that. A T-gun is operational, so I don't see, like... Okay, you pick that up. I don't see something like a, uh... Did, wait, did he lose a unit doing that? I think Admiral may have lost the... Pa did, he lost the Panzergrader squad, didn't he? Oh my god. He probably killed the unit with a model right before it absorbed it, so... That now he is a beefed up uh, MG. Good for him, I guess. Uh, half track is deployed on the right. Hopefully suppressing. But yeah, because he has an AT gun, I doubt we're going to see like a uh, SU-76 or anything like that. I, I would suspect a T-70 for infantry. Or maybe... Well, no, the Axis really don't have any planes as of yet, so I don't see a half track. Unless he's reinforcing with it. Um, then I could see something like in the lines to keep up with the pressure. Which, by the way, pressure is doing pretty well. Conscripts retook mid. Uh, MG's in mid as well to cover from the train station. On the left, conscripts are in the building nearby with shock troops just toying around trying to grab territory. Um, and also protect against an inbound attack, which is happening. And remember, shock troops are better than assault grenadiers, but the assault grenadiers have their uh, awesome grenades. So they can use them... Uh, preemptively, the shark troops charge, and if someone's not paying attention, you could wipe a unit, theoretically. Or, you could use it to get the units out of the building and throw it at the door, and there's so many grenades, you, you're you bound to have a grenade or two that hits the units, if they're not paying attention. Uh, also, doubling up or tripling up could work, but then shock troops could also use the grenade. Nice MG suppresses it. They dodge the grenade, so great job by video shards. Johnny's having a real rough time. Uh, conscripts are back at base. Uh, some of his forces... Are nowhere in sight to really assist. Oh, wait, MG. A nice Molotov burns one. Great micro on his part, targeting each and every unit so they remain suppressed. I'm surprised he didn't have a unit come this way on the right and chuck grenades. That seems like a big missed opportunity. Also, again, it's uh, video shards. Uh, oh, he gets out. So good job. There. I, that's why I mentioned Malam went AT70. Okay. And again, none of these guys have fouls. So video shards is really being. I don't want to say detrimental, but he's currently not helping his team by not having any sort of AT. And I always, always, always recommend good base rule, AT by 10 minutes. 
That way you can counteract light armor like this, which as Code 2 has progressed in its lifespan, has become a more predominant method of, uh, uh, like, uh, of winning the game, of getting that light armor to assist. Pack Gun, thank God for Admiral, uh, does push back the T-70 with a Faust, however, no kill. Uh, Zis Gun opens fire, it looks like they killed the other Zis Gun, um, and they burn the Askren, which, by the way, he's down to... Two ask Wait, no, he has three ask reds. I, he probably lost one, right? Okay, he only lost one. I thought he lost more than that, but okay. Conscripts could retake this position as well. Battle going out in the forest. Half track is managing to hold the. Wait, maybe not. I thought they could hold him back, but it seemed like he took some damage from something. Oh, it was the 50 cal that was shooting him. Okay, that was a. Hey, you know what? At least he saw the 50 cal and decided to pull back. Again, good idea. With the armor piercing rounds, the 50 cal is nothing to sneeze at, so excellent choice. This does, though, impact the, um, the lineup because if he went, of course, with a 50 cal, he's maybe going with a Stewart, but he definitely is not going to have AT. Or at a. a so he's going to have to either. And it looks like he's going with the Major to rush armor, which German tank could get armor in the next, like, minute. Um, because of the half track, it's very unlikely that Diplo fan could out, uh, like just um, outrun the race to get armor. But it again, it, Sherman take having armor would be a big win for him because of Sherman with the, or actually, you know what? Even the bulldozer could be super effective against the infantry. Conscripts are taking the brunt of the action while shock troops hide behind good cover. Uh, the Askrens though get suppressed by a, a well placed Maxim. Milam goes with airborne troops so he can start upping his men with um, those SVTs. Multiple T-70s on the front trying to hold back the axes. And they do force the mortar back. Excellent hit. Uh, forces the enemy away. Panzergrideers are now deployed in mass. I feel like this is a very bad idea. Um, there's no demo. But I would still think it's a pretty damn uh, bad idea to just like, con uh, like just group up all your forces. I, conjugate, that would be, that's the terminology I'm looking for, right, as well. Okay. I have, like, a brain fart there. I'm like, I can't say the word. Then say something else. I'm like, oh, wait, that was the word. Um, more weapons are being dropped. Uh, this one being, yep, more weapon crates. Which, theoretically, could be used for uh, the other Soviet player. Which would be amazing. They could get some additional weapons. Uh, Panzergrade here moving on in. Again, solid unit uh, for medium to close range warfare. Especially against conscripts, though the SVT is helping it against it. On the far right, uh, the American player is trying, but half track is keeping him at bay and gets up to vet one. So excellent job. Grab that smoke. Sherman, though, is being made as expected. Maybe a little late, but that's because of manpower losses. Um, but if we currently see, the Axes are in the lead. They have 469. Nice. And uh, they have a 60 point lead on the. Allies. Allies will need to change tactics uh, and hold the VPs in order to counter and win. Uh, we can see here that Johnny and Malam are predominantly on the left. I, I mean, it's not like the Axes have, like, a ton of units. Yes, you could say, oh, great shot, they have Askrens. Let me rephrase that. They don't have a ton of AT units. Uh, they have one Stug, and he has one pack. So, a big... Possible uh, Soviet counterattack with armor could theoretically cut the al the the axis in two, at least in my eyes. And even the Stug is a a tank destroyer that faces only straight. It can't turn its barrel uh, without turning the whole unit. So what you could do theoretically is use the T70s to run around circles. And because we know it's over there, and he got another T70, he could overwhelm his opponent. So we'll see how things fare. Mortar does get pushed back. Great hit. Uh, speak of which, great hit on the T-70. The Askrens are attacking, but uh, these T-70s are just literally mopping up the floor. Oh my god, it is going to be a slaughter. T-70s are like, mine, 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 mine. Oh my god, there's a man stuck in there. Oh, he went flying. Soviet forces are being rather successful with these babies and pushing the enemy back. Pack Gun, though, gets another great hit on another one. Not the one that was already hit, so... They're generally fine to take a hit or two. Yeah, it's just when you get the three hits is more like, eh. Let's, uh, let's not risk it. Let's, because it will probably die. 
You may get lucky, but it misses or something, but most likely it would be dead. Speaking of which, Stu decides to charge against two conscripts. Double AT grenade will bust its engine and slow it down, so that's a big win as he only has one pioneer squad. So, keeps him tied down. Speaking of tying down, that Sherman is uh, not as effective as I thought it would be because, again, looks like uh, Doplo did deploy Rakenwerfer, which successfully pushed back the Sherman. He wasn't able to smoke it, it looks like, or counteract its long range fire um, on the far. Right, Sherman's just really having a rough time. And usually I don't say give up force, but if you're having a real rough time and maybe your teammate would be better off with you in mid, with you just sporadically having units and maybe using artillery or something, I think that could be beneficial. And by that, I mean maybe kind of have like hit and run attacks, but use a bulldozer here to fire, just something in the future. I don't give up entirely, try to keep contesting, but... Um, I could see Sherman Tank trying to put maybe some more armor in mid to really help out his team to hold this VP. Because again, as long as they hold the VPs, they're in a good uh, a good state. And that might allow Johnny to push more on left. This gun gets a great shot on the Panzer IV, which was deployed by Admiral. So again, they have the Stugs and they have the Panzer IV. So they have a good selection. Whereas we have a Triple T-70. Again, I find this so weird. Uh, Johnny has a big Tier 1 army. Uh, sorry, or I should say big infantry army. Yeah, I mean, like, it's... Uh, the Zisk guns, the mortars, MG, shock troops. It's it's a lot, but... My general can... My, my, my general remark about this whole ordeal is... He's still not close to getting armor, and it seems like he's gearing up for a... IS-2, which I hope not. That's a really bad idea to just save up for a big heavy tank when you're three CPs away from it, unless you're hoping to get a big victory, which hopefully the Zisk gun uh, combo can provide. There's two of them coming on in. Stugs actually have a little bit of protection from the hay, kind of blocking shots. Stugs pull back. Uh, so do the engineers. I, I like how some of them have SVT rifles. Did, did Johnny grab any of No, he, if, he grabbed an MG42. He grabbed the German equipment. He's like, I'm not going to lend lease from my own guy. I'm going to lend lease from the Germans. Makes perfect sense. Anyway, uh, T-70s are kind of watching over the VP, slowly wearing down the infantry. Not in cover, um, so it can easily be torn apart. And this gun almost wipes the unit. Uh, now it needs to stop and fire on the armor, but looks like the Askrens are moving on in. MG once again will suppress him. I, he's not doing that great of a job making sure his units don't get suppressed. Uh, or spreading them out so that way they don't get chained, but that's what's happening. Um, this whole area fell apart. Looks like the MG died. I'm not sure if it was a demo or something. Uh, for the fire, maybe it was a plane crash that I missed, but I don't know. Whatever it killed it, uh, good work, because it looks like the Germans are down an MG. Panzer Guy to throw a bundle on this MG. Malam is not paying attention. He takes some hits, but only loses one model. Uh, let's see. Shock troops are pretty low. Maybe another bundle. They throw it. He's knocking out. And, oh, he just gets out. But the grenades actually hit everything around it, including the Zisk gun. So while it doesn't kill the MG, it does knock out an AT gun. That might allow... Oh, nope. AT grenade. And that just was enough time to kill the unit. Excellent work. So, Axis forces are pressing back into mid, hoping to grab that territory. 76 is on the field. We actually have two of them. And again, Milam really going with a light vehicle army rather than some sort of uh, big heavy tank, which Johnny seems to be going. Uh, Johnny seems to be of the mindset, I will get the big IS-2. And he, uh, to be fair, he has the Boltons for it, so he can definitely boost its potential even further. But it's one of those situations where in the meantime, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't have much, right? But looks like even though he could have possibly deployed another armored unit, which might have helped speed up the process, he's probably going to get the IS-2 in the next probably like two minutes, I would say. So like 21 minutes will have it if he starts getting some CPs. And that would really help if the Zisk guns can actually hit this armor. And this Panzer IV may do it. It's kind of like Majin Buu in Dragon Ball where he was unlocked by Vegeta and Goku fighting. Otherwise, it would have taken forever. That's what's kind of what this IS-2 is. It's, it's Majin Buu. Uh, that if the Soviet can keep getting that that XP, it will just give enough to unleash uh, the Soviet super weapon. 
Anyway, half track is opening fire, pushes back the rifleman. Panther's on the field. He already got a command panther. That's a interesting choice. Um, hey, it's a good choice. He can definitely uh, again coordinate fire, cause a lot of havoc for enemy forces, and almost a donner on the field as well. So he could use them to maybe clear out these units in good positions. Uh, like, I feel really bad for Sherman taking this environment, but I feel great for Doplo as he's doing a really good job of holding the line. Again, Sherman is being healed. It's a base Sherman. I forgot to mention that earlier. Also, radio silence went into effect, so it made it harder for Sherman to detect his units. Panzer Grenadiers pushing left. Grenade completely whiffs. Uh, grenades being thrown by the Askrens. Do push back the shock troops. Uh, can these Panzer Grenades in negative cover win? Goes Grenade, hoping he'll retreat. Stops him from retreating. But again, he's going to take a little more damage, but still, at least he didn't, you know, lose it, which is always the big threat. Speaking of which, what are these T-70s hoping to do? I don't know, but it would be curious to see if they managed to actually advance and, you know, dish out damage to the enemy, or, like, what's, what's the plan here? What's the motive? What's the goal? Folk squads are vet four. Uh, let's see. They're actually doing pretty good. They have 15 kills. 21 for another pair. Uh, Stern Pioneers are averaging 8 to 13. Not too shabby. Half tracks at 9. Uh, let's see. Are we seeing good kills across the board? Yeah. I would say for the most part, the German forces have gotten a healthy kill count. They've also died a lot. As we can see, Video Shards has kept losing so many Askrens. It's down to 1. Um, so that's a big loss. Again, more SU-76s and T-70s for Malam. I, this has to be a joke. But we do have an IS-2, and it's, I would say, about the 21 minute mark. So I was roughly on point. But yeah, IS-2 is on the field, so they do have that big heavy tank. The Axes do have a counter with the command tank in the forest, because they could use the coordinate fire and hopefully take it out. T-70s, by the way, doing a really good job of wearing down the infantry. IS-2 as well, supported by a bunch of ZIS guns. Pack gun hitting it. Again, uh, we also have the tactical IL-2 Summercron, which could hurt armor. If Malam feels that the IS-2 or his T-70s need air support, he could call it in. Uh, but they, and Technically, they have the Howitzer Barrage, which could work as a direct strike, but again, you have to get uh, very lucky. That's something these Sturms may not be able to, to have or get. Uh, very low. Holy God, he actually lived. I am shocked. I am, honest to God, shocked. But again, the veterans see help keep it alive. It, I believe, gets some survival bonuses at Vet 2. So it, that really does help keep the unit in one piece. Uh, Stu opening fire on the IS-2. Does pen as well, which is, again, a little bit harder for the lighter uh, tank destroyer, but still very effective. We have a light artillery barrage hoping to bring down either the building or at least push the MG back, which it seems to do. Three SC-76s head right. T-70s annihilate the Panzergren squad. Doesn't even get a chance to leave this area. It just gets put down, um, which is a great counter. Now, I would assume that we could see an elephant on the field or maybe a tiger. Uh, both of which have its practical uses, but again, with the IL-2 Cervix Strike, you could absolutely see a counter. Great shot with the Zis guns, almost knock out one Stu. The other one gets hit by the 76s. Oh. The SU-76 is taking a lot of hits, gets Fausted. Uh, but generally speaking, not too shabby for him. But now we have the Panther. This is the biggest fear, is the Panther coming in the flank to assist. He pops flares, hoping to see what the enemy has. And he realizes there's a lot of armor, so he's going to pull back. American infantry also might have caused him to pull back. Again, being right next to him. Again, 180 grenade won't do much. And a Panther, again, probably should upgrade it with the uh, MG42. Allied forces swarming on in with the T-70s. Clearing the cache. Great use. By the way, I forgot to mention all the caches the Axis built. Um, we can see a number of fuel caches. Which is good. Ax allies don't have any caches of their own. Panzergrenade's moving on in. Buddy, you're versing T-70s. What the fuck do you think you're going to do? Yeah, it doesn't go that well. Alba Sedan trying to do his best. But uh, Jackson comes along the side. Sherman with 
High explosive rounds, not armor piercing, comes in. So Panther's not actually in that bad of a state. This thing is probably gonna kill it. Yeah, 240's coming in, so that'll cause havoc for all the Axis forces in the region. But that Sherman, I, I, I'm assuming he sacrificed it. Otherwise, it was a needless death. Half track gets neutralized. Here comes the 240 barrage. The Germans and allies have to worry. But uh, Germans may... Nope, T-70's clearing up the infantry. Kubel just gonna go down. Low friendly fire, but not too much. There it goes down. Stu just being overwhelmed by the T-70s. Vet 2, by the way, for a lot of these guys. Actually, all of them. Stu fires. Doesn't fire. Also, the Stu on left got obliterated by the uh, IS-2, so great job there. A large-scale allied counterattack in the forest. Again, it would have been a little different if there were mines or other defenses, but because uh, he didn't have too much, or at the very least, he kind of grouped them up, which allowed the 240 to do work, uh, it just really fell apart very quickly. Bazooka team coming in on the Command Panther does a little bit of damage. Uh, but allied forces are definitely now on the move and I would say have the initiative on the field uh, the, Even though the Sherman died the Jackson is still alive. Well, I'm saying the t-70 is the best unit um, I can't deny the effectiveness. They have 30. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, they have 34 kills um, Yeah, they yeah, yeah, so it, they have a healthy number um, some, the conscripts technically have more, but still, they've done decent work, especially against armor, which, again, if you shoot armor, it's not going to get anything for, from it, so. Grenade is maybe, maybe pushing back that unit? No, he just moves to the side and then comes back. I also like how he built cover for himself. Hope to die and help you clear the infantry. Command Panther comes on in. He does have the MG42, I forgot to mention, so that will at least have a better effective effectiveness against infantry um, again 76 is just barraging the Panzer Grenadier away Stu could go in but there's three against one it's probably not all that great Katusha does fire and gets a number of kills on target so good job with Johnny managing to force the enemy back and hold on to the VPs and now the allies have actually taken the lead so great job at the counterattack to hold the VPs now we're seeing a more desperate German fight as we have random units that charge into once again NG fire and get suppressed. Uh, IS-2 advancing. Panzer IV cannot fight that behemoth. Not at all. Look, the IS-2 is a great move by Johnny to get, uh, looks like. And I watch, I jinx it in and somehow dies to a... Oh, no, Tiger's on the field. I, I, sorry, I just, in my mind, I immediately just... I thought it was a Panzer IV, and then I'm like, wait a second, that's not a Panzer IV, that's the Panzer IV. And that's a T-70 charge. What is happening? Anyway, uh, they're pushing on in, hoping to kill the Stug. That's a lot of T-70s perishing to do that. And again, the, like, I, the Panzer Headquarters building is firing on them as well, which we get them down. Pack Gun gets knocked out. IS-2 and Tiger duking it out, but again, both are down to a quarter. Panzer IV theoretically could go for the kill, but the Zis gun is guarding it. Um, one of the Zis guns did perish. Conscripts, though, guard the left flank. Right flank, not much really there to assist. And the 240s coming down uh, near this base, so it's slowly going to either kill the base or it might kill this cache, depending on how good the remaining shots are. We have another Panther being made, which, yeah, I can see it. He has solid infantry. Why not? Base getting closer and closer to being near death. I mean, same thing with the cash, but at the very least, I think that's it, right? Yeah, the barrage is finished, and we're in a pretty good state. Panther and Jackson are uh, staring against each other, but they don't fire. Again, Panther does have veteran C2, which is pretty damn good. We'll see how things uh, keep going. If they can keep getting that higher veterancy to boost all the units around it, that would be a huge win for a bunch of Vet 5 units to start getting additional bonuses from the Command Panther. Um, so, yeah. Um, grenade is thrown. Storms are weakened. Askrens are 
pretty much leading this army other than pioneers. I feel like you need something more. Population-wise, we're looking at the Axis being in the... Oh, God. I'd say mid-50s. Uh, and the Allies are in the... I would say... Uh... Maybe upper 70s. Still, not great to be an Axis member. They need to start getting some allied kills and start wearing down the resources. But it looks like we have a giant... Oh my god. Really? Really? This is what we're doing right now. A bunch of SU-76s are roaming the field of battle because why not? And now the Tiger is walking in on them. He doesn't have a mark ability, right? He doesn't. Tiger gets AT grenaded by a conscript, I believe. Yeah, 70. Oh my God, the swarm! I am the swarm. I I could just hear that trailer music, that amazing trailer for the swarm from uh, StarCraft 2, and it's it, but instead of just Zerg, it's well, um, a bunch of 76s apparently. IS-2 as well, diving for it. Elephant, though, returning fire. Gets a great hit on target. And again, they're doing a solid counterattack. IS-2 trying to use the building as cover. And he does manage to escape. 76 as well, pulling back. Although they get another one to their ranks. They do have enough men where they could get this Tiger operational quickly if they can guard it and protect it. The problem is Video Shards just doesn't... Oh, no, he actually rebuilt his army. Okay, I was going to say something else. I take it back. I'm sorry for implying he has a solid force. Um, he just needs to use it and kill some conscripts or something. Like, any sort of kill would be a big win right now for the Axis. But uh, on the far uh, right, we have double Panthers, AT. So against armor, I think the Axis definitely have an advantage. Jackson can fire from afar, don't get me wrong. Misses, which is quite funny. Uh, Sherman Bulldozer on the field? Okay. They do shoot it. Does weaken a little bit more. Direct fires through. We have uh, flares going out. Which I'm assuming is based on the... Yep. The uh, artillery flares. Oh my god. Coming into the rescue is the 76th War. Panther trying to blitz away. Does dodge a couple shots. But there's six of these... No, well five firing at the time. And yeah, they just neutralize a lot of them. This is not what I expected. Oh my god. The 76 Swarm is potent, pushing back the Panther. AT forces by themselves could hold the Sherman Jackson with the other Panther, but not this. There's no way. They're just absolutely kicking Doplo in. That was a bit much. Yeah, I would say it so. But he didn't lose any. On the far left, now, like, if he has all of his men there, now would be the time to actually go after him. He was already dead. All right, they're taking mid. They're trying to stop the hemorrhaging, but I, I think it's temporary at best as conscripts take the left. Tiger tank is there, nearly vet two with the elephant coming on in and the Panzer IV. Uh, again, right now that 76 swarm is where, uh, where I'm really worrying. That, yeah, this whole thing is horrifying to fight. Uh, unless you can ambush it with, like, I would say two AT guns and an armored unit. I'm curious to see how things fare. So, anyway, looks like we have some allied forces preparing for a tiger to push on through. Uh, tiger is separated from the elephant, so if they do swarm it, now would be a good time. We have three, we have seven, we're gonna have, we're gonna have seven SU-76s. Why? Oh my god. Are they all gonna fire like a massive artillery barrage? Like, what? what's the plan with these guys? We do have a light artillery barrage in mid. Katusha is well firing. It's gonna hit the MG. And it's Vet 3. Gotta give credit to the MG with 10 kills. But, uh, yeah, it does die to the Katusha, unfortunately. Now again, we have a... Uh, to upload looking his wounds. He's trying to get as many wrecks as possible to replenish himself, and looks like that worked. He was able to get himself a Command Panther. I could see him trying to do a co combined arms effort for the Axis and get all of his men focused on a big counterattack and knock out the Allied armor. Uh, theoretically, while the 76s are strong in numbers, you have to remember they're still a bit weaker 
Uh, it's very, they're, uh, they're a variation to take destroyer that can't take that many hits. So if you can ambush them, use flares and hit them with Shrek fire, other armored units, AT guns, you could theoretically knock it out very quickly. IS-2 falling back because the elephant, which not that close to being, uh, you know, a, uh, a vet one yet, but still the, maybe get some veteran scene. You'll be able to turn the tide Panther as well to help tiger vet two with 11 kills. Not too shabby. Is pushing on left. We have a T-34 that's just chilling at base. Maybe to help him along with the airstrike. Which, again, he could also use against the elephant to kind of force it to move. That way it does stick around and fire and start murdering his 76s or a number of different things. We'll see what he does. But in the meantime, we do have a counterattack that sort of maybe didn't go as well. Sherman Tank uh, tried to, I guess, to attack this area. And then the ally, then the Axis charged. And then... Uh, some of their units fell back. Now it looks like they brought in almost a dot. Yeah, it looks like the Axis will win this fight. Oh, wait. No bulldozer comes on in and says, get off my lawn. Tiger Tank doing a good job at wearing down the infantry from far. Good Werfer. Uh, who was that? Oh, okay. Oh, no. We actually didn't get any kills. Never mind. I thought it got kills, but no. Tiger Tank pulling on back. Panzer IV chilling in mid as four kills and does have a spawning scope, which do definitely helps because you can see super far. Good kill on the conscript. Oh, shit. Well, do you see that? Because that looks fucking bad. Giant 76 swarm is now turning around. Elephant, you'd be a great time to shoot him. Actually, it'd be a great time for all of you guys to move up and shoot him. There's no AT guns or anything. And it, will take him a it took him a while to turn around. There was some allied support nearby, but I don't know. I'm looking at potential here. But the the, the 76 is now turned back around, supported by a Jackson. Which again, absolutely horrifying to see this take place. They switched to prioritizing vehicles. And uh, I have an assumption this T-34 will ram the elephant. Maybe the 76 has come in. Oh my god. God, the artillery. Nothing survives. Yeah, they, you, you did it. They, they're dead. They're absolutely dead. Uh, pushing on in uh, again. They have a flare going off from the mortar. I, I assume the mortar? I would assume. Nice fouls. One of them stopped, so maybe you slow the rest of them down. Maybe pick off the weak one. Where's the elephant? Oh, it's on the far left. Tiger is back at base healing. 22 kills under its belt. But again, they need to gain VPs to stop the bleed. Great here squad gets pushed back. And right now, it's generally calm. There's a little fighting going on in the city. But that will finish up right now as fire comes down this MG, forcing it to retreat. We do have a dive on the far right, being the Stern Pioneers. And good job with him having sweepers to make sure there wasn't a demo or uh, mines or really anything else in the close proximity. But they'll probably decap it. I don't think they'll grab it. As it, Even though I think the Vet 5 Serms will probably win against the Vet 3 Askrens, he had the 50 cal. That just, yeah, makes it clear cut. The 76s are just waiting. Great shot by the Elephant on them. All right, Panzer IV giving sight. Again, I, I think actually being a, more aggressive in this situation is actually the better call. I think the elephant staying where it was and firing might have been good. If he would have dove with that, I mean, like, there's so much AT that they could have easily handled from multiple directions those 76s and possibly killed one or two. Maybe more if they get lucky, but alas, they escaped, and now they're getting, getting some quick heals. Milan making sure his units are operational as quickly as possible. Same thing with Sherman Tank. He's uh, hitting the flank and just trying to hold the forest, which I give full credit for. It's a pain. It can be an annoying job to hold this area, but it's so worth it because of all the resources you get and the VPs that you keep under your control. Uh, Rifleman could move on in to grab the territory. Or at least protect the territory. Obasadon does it really care he's, he's like there was a 50 cal over there i'm not dealing with it oh push on left big soviet push multiple t-34s against the tiger which is having a rough time he's trying to get away uh he's blitzing 
He does the T34 pens, however, even though he pens, he does manage to use his speed to dodge the ram and get out. Panther uh, trying to get out as well. He's marked. 240's coming on in. Panther's diving. We have a small effort on the right, but the I'm assuming the Grandiers kind of stop him in his tracks. Again, using that coordinate fire option on the IS2. He's hoping to take it down. He needs that win, but the ram, the bloody ram comes in, and while well, the T-34 will ultimately stop and protect the Panther from the Command Panther, or sorry, the IS-2 from the Command Panther. This other Panther does not care. He runs over a bunch of conscripts in the meantime, bounces off the IS-2. IS-2 hopefully can fire from range. Um, fire. Bounces. Oh. Oh my god. Vet 3. IS-2. Lucky dog. Manages to survive. Although Katusha may not. May not. T-34 retreating as well. Uh, let's see. Command Panther and actually the other Panther are barely alive. Katusha actually managed to get around with the Jackson coming on in. 76 Swarm come. Oh my god. I'm glad I see this. He's like, I killed one of them. And there's still like six left as they charge in. He might have had one development, but the elephant just can't. He needs some AT and they don't have any AT. Again, going almost to Dutton and Askrens and all this stuff. You, you forget about the infantry that has AT. But yeah, the elephant would have died and the allies were pretty much just cutting straight through mid with whatever they could get. Um, yeah, that was, that was a good win. I mean, all the Axis armor was pretty weak. So 76 is probably going to push the base and kill a lot of them. So very cool. Very cool to see. Um, overall, again, Milan, I think this was a pretty solid game. I can see why you sent to me. It, you wanted to highlight the SU-76s. And I think it was a good choice as I don't really see a lot of SU-76s. But uh, in this case, they did pretty well. However, Johnny got top damage and kills. I'm going to guess that's his AT guns. Let's find out. Doplo, by the way, top damage and top kills. He was doing very well in Forest, I can understand. 13,000 for his Command Panther. Yeah, that makes sense. 47 kills for his Volk. Um, sorry. Uh, let's see. Admiral's next. Elephant did about 8,500 damage. Uh, Grandier's got a decent amount of kills. Uh, Video Shards. Uh, Tiger, 7,500. Not too shabby. Again, it kind of just scattered all over the place. Nothing, like, too extreme. Like, Johnny, 23k for AT guns. They were doing work at holding back the armor. Uh, 15 kills with the Zis guns, just constant barraging and AT fire, but they did nearly 25k in damage. So excellent work. And you only lost what? Two? Yeah, you lost two of them. So that's honestly not bad for how much you invested into them. And then we have the Assault Grandiers, 28 kills. Never died. Very cool to see. But yeah, that is game. It highlights uh, good teamwork. Again, one guy's doing very good, but he's by himself. His allies are on the other side of the field. Quickly go over, deal with the threat, and then switch back before the enemy can react. So always good to see that play. The 76s were fantastic and hilarious to see versus an elephant. But no, I, th I thought this was a pretty good game. So thank you, Milan, for submitting it. And thank you to all my patrons for your support. This has been GrayShot17, and reminding you to submit your replays so I can cast them on Sunday. Even if you're not a patron, I tried to cast replays. Just make sure you have your name, title, uh, it, uh, name and the title. In the description, I would say have some sort of uh, basic idea of what the game is and what I should be looking out for. More details, the better. And finally, uh, no mods if at all possible, just because I, I'm not familiar with advanced powers and others, so I, I I feel less comfortable casting games, which I don't know the uh, mod mechanics or stuff like that. But uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see all of you next time. Hello, everyone. Before you all go, you can check out more content above. You can subscribe, and you can hear as I talk about some amazing people who support me on Patreon, which include Falkford, Afria, Joey G240, Malam, Ace, Shinobi Warrior, Pyro Shark, Sum Tool, Epic Pleb. Thank you all for your incredible support. You literally helped this channel keep on growing, so thank you. If you want to support the channel, again, check out some of the stuff I mentioned. Otherwise, I'll see all of you next time.